So in this section, we just talk about why we solve algebra problems the way we solve algebra problems. Um, so we're going to start with some terms, like what an equation is. Here's what you're going to write. It's a statement that shows two mathematical expressions are equal. It is a statement that shows two mathematical expressions are equal. It is a statement that shows two mathematical expressions are equal. Happens less in my honors class than it does in my standard, but some people uh, will have no equal sign and then be solving for something. Um, but you can't solve an equation without an equal sign. Because equation, equal, you know. So that's an equation, a statement that shows two mathematical expressions are equal. Solve an equation. Here's what you're going to write. You're going to find the value of the variable. Okay. Technically, you're finding what fulfills a conditional statement um, in the form of an equation. But really, you're finding the value of a variable. And what does a variable look like? A letter. So in this section, it'll probably won't be x. It'll be like a y or a q or an r or something. So find the value of a variable. The last is a formula we can talk about in general. What is a formula that we know? Y equals okay, wonderful. Okay, an equation looks like this. X minus 2 equals 5. All right. Y equals MX plus B, each of these letters represents something, right? Y and X actually represent a coordinate point. Don't know if you remember that. M, does anybody remember what an M represents? It's a slope, right? The rise over the run. And then the B represents the Y intercept, which is where it crosses the Y axis. But this is a formula because you would plug things in for the slope. You plug things in for the Y intercept. Whereas an equation, do I plug anything into an equation? I do not. I just solve an equation, correct? So there's a difference between them. I'll show you what uh, the definition of a formula is. A formula is an equation that relates two or more real-life quantities. It is an equation that relates two or more real-life quantities. So it is an equation that relates two or more real-life quantities. You're like, what does this mean? Think about A equals LW. What does A stand for? Area, area which is a real-life thing, right? Area is the amount of space all right, inside of something. And L stands for? Length, length which again is the length of a real-life item. And then W stands for width. So a formula, you plug things in for one of these letters, and they're real-life quantities. An equation could have a real-life quantity that you're solving for, but you're, not, again, not plugging anything in. All right, and then the second section we're going to talk about really quick um, are the properties of equality. The first one you're going to write is the addition property of equality. Let's go ahead and fill that in. These property of equality, um, they keep equations equal. And I'll explain what they mean. This is the addition property of equality is the first blank in the middle of the page. Addition property of equality. So what you're going to do with your highlighter, the addition property of equality says if A equals B, then I can add a C to both sides and the equation would remain equal. So I can add the same number to both sides and the equation remains equal. That's why it's called of equality. This goes along the lines of what you do to one side you have to do the other. That's what this section is. So we have addition property of equality. The next one is subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property of equality. Subtraction property of equality. And this one says if I subtract the same number on both sides, my equation stays equal. Go and highlight the minus C on both sides. You can subtract the same number on both sides. And that is the subtraction property of equality. If you are a betting person, what's the next property of equality? Multiplication. Multiplication.
multiplication property of equality. So this one says if I multiply the same number on both sides, then I still have an equal equation. So times C and times C. Do you see the second portion? What does that say? C cannot equal zero. Why can we not multiply both sides by zero? Because it would make zero equal zero and that'd be nonsense. You cannot multiply both sides by zero or you would no longer have an equation. That's all that meant. Last one, or second to last one, we got division property of equality, which means we can divide the same number on both sides and our equation would remain equal. So division property of equality. where you divide both sides by C. Again, C cannot equal zero because if I divided both sides by zero, can you divide a number by zero? You cannot. Here's how you remember. You can divide zero by a number that's okay. All right? But you cannot divide a number by zero. It's not okay. See? Okay, no. Um, you'll, you're you're in honors, you'll need to remember this, especially for algebra two. Um, but anyways, you can't divide a number by zero, that's all that's saying. The last one is called the substitution property of equality. Substitution property of equality. So this property we used all in chapter one. When we found x and we wanted to find the measure of an angle, what did we do with x? We plugged it in, that's called the substitution property of equality, meaning a can be substituted for B, or B for A in any equation or expression. So when we were plugging it back in, that's the substitution property. And that's it. So what we're going to be doing in this section, you'll see on your notes, you've got two columns. In the first column, we'll be solving. In the second column, we write what property we used. Anytime you see justify each step, you have to write what property you are using. All right, so first... I would like to move the smaller x. So which of these is the smaller x? Negative 4x. How do I move negative 4x? I'm going to add it. So I am adding 4x on both sides. This is called the addition property of equality. You may shorten it to add prop of eq. There are a lot of addition properties in math, so this is a specific one of equality. So add a prop of EQ is how, how short you can make it. This cancels out 4x on the right. We're going to drop down what we have remaining. 3x plus 4x is 7x. Okay, a lot of y'all put lines. Um, then we got plus 2. I just dropped that guy down. Equals 23. So all I did was the addition property of equality. What would be my next step in solving this equation? Subtract 2 on both sides. This is called the subtract. You can put subtract property or prop of EQ. Why would I not want you to write subs or just sub? There's a substitution property. So you got to do subtract property of equality. Subtract prop of equality. All right, then we got 7x, I just dropped it down, equals, what is 23 minus 2? 21. All right, and then my last step, divide by 7, because I am dividing by 7 on both sides, this is the division property. You may write div prop of equality, in which we get our final answer, x equals 3. You don't normally write substitution unless it asks. Um, the substitution property of equality looks like 3 times x 
plus 2, I'm just rewriting the equation, 3 times x plus 2 equals 23 minus 4 times x. So I put parentheses instead of x because we would plug in 3, and you would see that the two sides equal. That is a substitution property of equality. You don't normally have to write it. Um, I'm just showing you a, an example. Questions on this problem? Good. Go to the next page. Go ahead. You have to do exactly like we just did. Does that answer your question? All right. The next one is called the distributive property. Go ahead and fill it in at the top of page two. Distributive property. It is not of equality. It is just the distributive property. Distributive property. I'm going to tell you the number one thing I wrote on this quiz was distribute. Because a lot of people thought they distributed but did not distribute. So I'll show you how. These are number or letters, I know, but they represent numbers. Um, if I were to distribute the A in, I would do A times B, which is AB. A times B, which is AB. And then you would do A times C, which is AC. One of the problems on the quiz, it had a distributive portion. And a lot of people did A times B which was AB, and then they wrote, like they drew this, but then they wrote just C. So they didn't distribute to both. So make sure you're multiplying that front number times both pieces. The same thing is if there were a minus sign, you would have AB minus AC. So we're gonna do the same thing. Use the distributive property. Notice again how it says justify each step. That's why we're gonna have to write out what we're doing as we do it. So what is my first step? Distribute. So we got negative 5 times 7w, which is negative 35w. Negative 5 times 8, which is negative 40. Off to the side, I'm going to write distributive property. I'm going to write distrib property. It is not of equality because did I do it to both sides of the equal sign? I did not. It's just distributive property. All right, what is my next step? I'm going to add 40 to both sides, which again is the add prop of EQ. So again, this is how you can shorten it, add prop of EQ. So then we'd have negative 35W equals 30 plus 40 is 70. My next step, divide by negative 35, which again is the division. So div prop of equality. You get your final answer, which is W equals negative 2. Negative 2. All right, using other properties of equality. These more apply to uh, geometry. One of them does apply to algebra a little bit, so you're on the next page. There are three properties. First one is called the reflexive property. The reflexive property. And it sounds redundant, like we have to say this out loud, but it more so applies to geometry than it does to anywhere else. So in geometry, eventually, and some one of you asked me on the map test, you're going to have to figure out if triangles are congruent to each other. It's an entire chapter in geometry. One, at one point, you'll have to say that AB from this triangle, right? This is a side of my left triangle. You're going to have to say that it is equal to AB on the other triangle, or BA, either way. AB, BA, however you name it. Because you'll have to list out what makes two triangles congruent, and this would be part of it. So you'll see it later on in like chapter five. This is a reflexive property where you have to say something is congruent to itself. The second one is a symmetric property. You use this a lot in algebra one. So the symmetric property is the second property. 
That is the second blank. It is the symmetric property. So remember, when you have 4 equals x, um, it was preferred that you put x equals 4. This is the symmetric property. You could do the same thing with um, inequalities. The symmetric property just flips them. So if 4 is less than x, that means x would be greater than 4. That's a symmetric because think of symmetry. The last one is called the transitive property. It is the hardest property, I would say. But you probably use it more than you think. Um, we do it all the time in volleyball. We just don't know the video. Uh, but I'll give you an easy one. Let's say Gabriel is the same age as Kaya. Sorry, I think you can mix up the time. Gabriel is the same age as Kaya. All right? Put it in your mind. Ready? Kaya, separately, is the same age as Hope. So then what can we assume about Gabriel and Hope? They're the same age. Because if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. That's the transitive property. Yes, sir? It's called the doci -si -do. uh So when you have a libero that plays, so like, think your middle, probably. She plays back row for both of them. So if your libero serves in the game, so a libero is the different colored jersey. They only play back row. Okay, perfect, wonderful. So when they go to rotate and the libero goes to go to the front row, she doesn't want to go to the front row. She's not allowed to go to the front row. Normally she would come out and that front row player would come in. But if the libero is supposed to go serve for the other person she plays for, she will replace that person. That person will come out, and instead of her coming out and going back in, call it do instead of her going out and going back in, the two middles will go in for each other. It skips a step. Probably. We do it. That's okay. Okay, ready? So Libera plays back row. This is the 10 foot line, so this will okay. be the net. Hold on, let me at least pause my recording because this is not applied to. All right, so all we're going to do, the math is already solved for us. We just need to write what steps they did. So in the first, distributed. Correct. This was the given problem, and then they distributed the 2 in, they got 2x, and then 2 times 3, they got 6. That is the distributive property. It is not of equality. So you can write distrib prop if you'd like to shorten it. The next thing that happened, the only thing that happened, is they went from plus 6 minus 5 to a positive 1. <coughs> that is called combining like terms. It is not a property of equality. Did they subtract 5 on both sides? They did not. They did nothing to both sides. They just combined plus 6 minus 5. That is combining like terms. A lot of this we do in our heads. You know, we'll probably won't write combine like terms as much as you will in this you know, paper. This next step, they kind of colored it for you. What did they do to both sides? Subtract. They subtracted six. So that is the subtract prop of equality. So make sure you write out subtract prop of EQ. If you want, you can highlight the line. Yeah. All right, and then in the next step, all they did, they went from 2x minus 2x to nothing. Then they went from 5x minus 2x to 3x. So what did they do there? They already did the subtraction property of equality. They just combined like terms. Yeah. So we don't write things horizontal like they did. We normally do that in our head, combine the like terms. So we don't normally write it. Next up, what did they do to both sides? Subtracted 4, so subtraction property of equality. Then they went from 1 minus 4 to negative 3. Then they went from 4 minus 4 to nothing. So they, we already wrote the subtraction property of equality. They combined their like terms. I'm telling you, a lot of this you do in your head and you don't write down. All right, our next step, division, division property. 
of equality. They get to the answer, negative 1 equals x, and then they flip it. x equals negative 1. Symmetric. Symmetric property of nothing. Symmetric property. The reflexive is like x equals x, or 1 equals 1. You'll never really write that one. But symmetric property, you will. All right. We got a real life problem. You get a part a raise at your part-time job. You're going to take your highlighter here in a second. If you have multiple colors, it's helpful. To write your raise as a percent, you're going to use the formula P times R plus 1 equals N. This is a formula. We're going to plug things in. Formulas mean absolutely nothing if you don't know what the letters stand for. So that's what we're going to highlight. P is your previous wage. P is your previous wage. R is the percent increase as a decimal. And then last, you got N is your new wage. So each of these letters represents something. Each letter. So what we're going to do first, it says solve the formula for R. I'll wait a second to make sure you're caught up. We're going to write the formula, you know, because we're going to do things to it. We want to solve for R. There's two options to solve this. I'll tell you the easier one. Um, a lot of people think it is easier to distribute, and I would say that it is not. You could distribute if you wanted, but you would end up with P times R, which is PR, and then P times 1, which is P, and then you would subtract P and then divide by P. It's just a lot. Um, I would not really do that. It's just more steps. What is the letter P doing with parentheses? It's multiplying, right? So if I wanted to get rid of it, what is the opposite? Dividing. You could divide both sides by the letter P. This would cancel out the letter P on the left. None of this said justify your steps, so we don't have to write anything about it. Um, we're just going to do it. So we divided both sides by P. Do I need these parentheses now on the right side, left side? I do not. So I have R plus 1 equals N divided by P. So what is my last step? Subtract 1. Can you subtract a number from a letter? No, you're just going to write them next to each other. We solved for R. To solve a equation or a formula, you just are solving for a letter. So we solved for R. We got it by itself. That's the first half of the problem. Solve for R. The second half, we're going to figure out our percent of increase when we go from $7.25 to $7.54. Um, this is how much minimum wage what probably was when they published the book. Um, so P stands for your previous wage. Do we know our previous wage? $7.25. R stands for our percent increase. Do we know our percent increase? We do not know it yet. All right? And then N is your new wage, which is $7.54. So new wage is N, and our percent, or our, uh, our previous wage is P. So we're going to plug in. I'm trying so hard not to say rage instead of, I don't know why they labeled it R. Like, I know it's the rate increase, but I keep saying wait, wait, rage instead of, I don't know. That's fine. R. We don't know what R is. I highlighted mine in pink. I don't know what yours is. Equals, and the formula says N over P. So N is the new wage, which is 754 over P, which is the previous wage, which is 725 minus 1. So all we did was plug in. So now we need to math. 
What is 7, 54, divided by 7, 25? 1.04 minus 1, which is 0.04. Doesn't sound like very much, but what percent is that? 4%. I know a lot of people don't have jobs yet, um, but the national average, like at my job, uh, we all have to get at least a 2% raise. So 4% is, is technically double of what you are required to get. So, questions? So the main point of this, solve for a different letter, and then you'll plug things in to solve for something else. When you're ready, we can flip to the last two questions we will do today. We're going to solve for the letter Y. Does it say justify each step? No. It does not. So we do not have to. We're just going to solve for the letter Y. What is Y attached to? That negative 2, right? So we need to get negative 2Y by itself. So how can I move that 3X? Subtract it on both sides. Because what you do to one, you have to do to the other. Can I subtract a letter from a number? No. I cannot. So I'm going to write them next to each other. So which one do I want to write first? Negative. Sounds good. Negative 3x and then minus 16. Now I have negative 2y by itself. What is my last step? Divide by negative 2. I would divide each piece by negative 2 instead of like one big line because we're going to reduce. So we have y equals. What is a negative divided by a negative? Positive. And then does 2 go into 3 evenly? No. no. So we're just going to write 3 over 2. X. Do not make it into a decimal. None of these should become decimals. Leave it as a fraction, if it's a fraction. Negative 16 divided by negative 2 is? Positive 8. Correct. That's it. That's all you're doing. Letter B. We're going to solve for K. Again, it doesn't say justify each step, so we do not have to. What is my first step? I'm going to combine my like terms. So I'm leaving that negative 12 and the 3 alone. Minus 2 minus 3K is minus 5K. My next step, subtract 3. Minus 12 minus 3 minus 15 equals negative 5K. And then last, divide by negative 5. K equals 3. If you would like to flip it, instead of 3 equals K, put K equals 3. It does not matter. That is where we will end today.